Hello and welcome to this short introduction to Hawaiki Kia 3.0. If you haven't used Hawaiki Kia before, then this is the video for you. But if you're upgrading from Hawaiki Kia 2, then follow the link on screen now to watch the video that explains the many new and exciting features in this release. When we launched Hawaiki Kia 2, we told you it was one of the best Kias you could buy at any price. But with Hawaiki Kia 3, we've significantly improved on that. Not only have we made it even simpler to use, we've also made it even more powerful and flexible, and we've added a whole load of great new features, so we think you're really going to like the result. We're going to be looking at HK3 in Final Cut Pro 10, but if you're a user of Apple Motion or Adobe After Effects or Premiere on the Mac, the operation is essentially the same in each of the host applications. So you can find Hawaii Kia in your effects browser and you'll notice that there are two versions, one for blue screen and one for green. The shot on my timeline uses a green screen, so I'm going to grab the green module and apply it to the clip. The first thing I want to point out is HK3's unique view system, which has a variety of unique view options that you won't find in any other Kia. And they're all designed to help you get a great key with the minimum of guesswork. In Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion, the view buttons are available here on screen as well as in the inspector. But in the Adobe hosts, you'll need to access them from the effect controls. So over here on the left, we have the three quick view buttons. So that's Mat, Analysis and Source. Then we have two separate drop-down menus with very many more options. So these two menus are the same as each other and we can swap between them using this swap button. Or if we hit the dual view button, we can see the two options side by side. So let's dive in and key this shot. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the swap button to display the Luma map view. This view tells me exactly which control I need to grab in order to clear the background. In this case, the green screen backing is showing up as red, which means we need to grab the high density slider. If it had been blue, we would have needed to go for the low density control. So now we know which control to use, we can switch to the analysis view by hitting its quick view button. The analysis view is another custom view that you'll use all the time when setting up the key. Instead of the more familiar black and white matte view, it shows a much more accurate and easy to read picture of the state of the matte as we adjust it. The areas that are blue are areas that are semi-transparent, and the areas that are orange are solid foreground. The yellow areas indicate where your foreground is still solid but verging on being semi-transparent. So the aim first of all is to turn the blue areas black. And you can see that as I increase the high density value, we've done just that. A quick tip if you're in Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion is to hold down the Alt or Option key while scrubbing in the number field. Or if you're in one of the Adobe hosts, then hold down the Command key while dragging the slider. In both cases, that will gear down the adjustment and make it easy to get just the right value without overcorrecting. And that's very important if you want a great looking key. Finally, all we need to do is grab the foreground fill and increase the value till we've got our foreground areas solid orange or yellow. And that's it. Here's the finished result. A perfect key with no guesswork. Another quick piece of advice is don't overdo the foreground fill adjustment. You want to keep a nice blue semi-transparent edge wherever possible, as this is going to make for the best looking matte. So let's try another shot. This time it's a blue screen, so I've added the blue screen module and we'll take a look at the Luma map again to get started. And as you can see, we've got blue rather than red in the backing area. And you'll remember that means we need to go for the low density slider this time. So let's look at the analysis view again and adjust the low density value till our backing area goes black. And with a very small tweak to the foreground fill, we're good to go. So I hope you can start to see how easy it is to work with the Luma map and analysis views 
It's all about taking away the uncertainty and guiding you towards a quick, easy and great looking result. By targeting specific luminance values within the backing, HK3 is allowing you to pull a much better and more accurate key. So you're probably thinking this shot looked really easy to work with, but for comparison, let's have a look at what the Apple Kia did with it. So now all that hair detail has disappeared and we've got this soft, blurry, unconvincing edge all around. And here's what it looks like using key light inside of After Effects. It's better, but it's still a long way from being as good as Hawaii Kia. HK3 is giving you a truly state-of-the-art result, but the great thing is it's really easy to use. And if you want to dig deeper, there's a vast array of amazing features that are there to help you. OK, it's time to get a bit more advanced. Here's a shot from the open source movie Tears of Steel. Again, LumaMap tells us that we need to go for high density. So let's switch to analysis and make that adjustment. Now I've got to around halfway up the slider, but I haven't cleared this area down here. So I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to grab the high knee slider just beneath it here and very slightly reduce that value. And what that does is it lowers the threshold for the high density and lets us get at those areas that are slightly less bright. If we switch to the dual view and look at the Luma map over on the right here, we can see how that works in practice. Adjusting the knee evens out that slightly darker area of the backing. You'll see we also have a knee slider for the low density and that does the same thing for the low values. So if we just make our usual adjustment to the foreground fill, you'll notice that everything is good apart from the barrel of the gun here, where there's a lot of reflected green coming off the backing. Now there are lots of different ways we could approach this, but this gives me the opportunity to introduce you to pre-qualify, one of the unique and incredibly powerful features that we've added to HK3. Pre-qualify is in a group of its own here. What Pre-Qualify allows us to do is to adjust the balance of the red, green and blue channels independently in both the background and the foreground. And that's a really useful thing to be able to do. The first thing I want to do here is switch over to the RGB Max view so we can assess what's happening with our gun barrel. So this tells us that our green channel is dominant and that's what's causing the problem. So let's switch to dual view and put our analysis view over on the left and the RGB max view over on the right. And let's look at how we can adjust this. Obviously we could reduce the foreground green, so let's try that. And you'll see it's turning the gun barrel blue here on the right and it's solidified the gun barrel on the left in the analysis view. So now we just need to reduce the background green to clean up the background. Another strategy would be to increase the foreground blue, so let's try that. And again, we just need to reduce the background blue to compensate. But perhaps the best option would be simply to increase the foreground red. And as you can see, that does the job on its own without us having to compensate for the background. What's happening here can best be explained if we switch over to the pre-qualifier view. And this shows us a map of the pre-qualified background and foreground areas. Everything that's yellow will be considered foreground and everything that's purple will be treated as background. As you'll see, we've got some pretty sophisticated controls for adjusting this map. So for example, we can increase the background separation value and you can see that this intermediate area here now becomes background only, which means we can really fine tune the operation. But this is probably getting in a bit too deep for an introductory tutorial, so let's move on. You may have noticed that we're seeing through these small holes here where the gun has green lights, and that lets me show you another very useful feature, and that's Matte Cleaner, which we can find down here in the Matte group. So let's enable the Matte Cleaner checkbox. We'll increase the amount and also the fill holes value. And we can pretty easily fill in those holes. 
and that's despite them being very predominantly green to start with. You've probably also noticed that we've got some tracking marks up here at the top of the frame, and that too we can easily fix by using the outer mat option. Now what the outer mat is doing is giving us a garbage mat for the areas outside our main mat, as we can see if we switch to the outer mat view. The red areas are where the outer mat is taking control and suppressing any unwanted artefacts in our backing. So as we're going through, you're probably noticing a load of other controls I haven't been talking about, and all of these give you extra control over the mat extraction process. To find out more, go to the comments section and follow the link to the manual, which you can also access from within the plugin by clicking on this HK3 banner just here. One feature that needs mentioning briefly is auto balance, and we can see the effect of that if we look at this well-known shot from Hollywood Camera Work. Without touching anything else, I want us to have a look at the analysis view for this shot. We can find auto balance down here in the pre-qualify group, and you'll see that as I reduce the value, we're starting to see a lot more detail in the hair. We don't want to go too far, as we'll start to make it harder to key out the background, but I think you can see the advantage of this option. What we've done with Hawaii Geek here is calibrate the controls so that they're optimized for the most common types of green screen shoot, but in this case we have very dark hair against a well saturated and well lit backing, and that's why we need to use auto balance to compensate. Now when we adjust the high density we're getting a very good result indeed. You won't often need to use this feature, but it's good to know it's there. So at this point we should talk about the despill features in HK3. To see the despilled image prior to the final key, we can select the despill view. Now unlike some well-known keyers, the despill operation in HK3 is not tied to the matte extraction, so you don't have to worry about adjusting one to compensate for the other. Now of course what despill is doing is taking away green or blue contamination from the foreground image, and because when you reduce the value of one channel the overall luminance is reduced, what HK3 automatically does is to match the luminance of the original image before it was despilled. Now if your new background has roughly the same luminance as your original green screen backing, that will be exactly what you need. And in fact, that's what we've got with this shot. However, there will be times when you're wanting to add a darker or a lighter background, and then you'll want to override this default behavior. So you can just grab the auto luminance slider and adjust the result as necessary. But you can also use the brightness control for even more extreme adjustments. Even more useful are the RGB controls which let you mix your own despill replacement color. And if you need to, you can even adjust the saturation. To get a better idea of which areas are being despilled, we can switch to the spill map view. So where the foreground is cyan, there's no spill being removed. But the more pink there is, the more intense the despill process. And the spill map view will update as you make changes to the amount the spill map depth, or the balance. But for a different way of working, you can switch to the spill map overlay view, which is simply your final key with the spill map overlaid as a grid. And this allows you to see exactly which areas are being despilled in the context of the final key. So another really useful diagnostic tool that again helps to take away a lot of the guesswork. The next feature we'll come to is Edge, and here Hawaii Kia gives you a whole bunch of advanced compositing features that you simply won't find in any other Kia. So if we switch to the Edge Matte view, we can see what's going on. We've got a thin edge all the way around the foreground, and we can adjust the width of this edge so we can target more or less of our keyed image. So let's switch back to our final key view and hit the Edge Enable checkbox. Now we can, for example, increase or decrease the brightness of the edge. We can add or remove saturation. We can adjust the color balance. 
or we can even introduce some extra transparency into the edge. Each of these options mean we can really fine tune the look of our composite and eliminate any edge problems we might encounter. But sometimes we need to get even more precise and that's where Gradient Qualify comes in. So let's look back at our edge mat view and turn on the Gradient Qualify switch and you'll see that we now have a two color version and what this means is that we can affect two different areas of our edge independently based on how we set up the gradient. So we can rotate it, we can adjust its center position, and we can fine tune the spread between the two areas. In this case, I want to adjust the left hand side of the girl's hair so it sits better with our background. So I've positioned the gradient accordingly. And now I can dial up the brightness of the B side of the edge and maybe reduce the blue just a little. And that's all without affecting the A side, which of course I could adjust independently if I needed to. So it's this kind of control that really gives Hawaii Kia a big advantage over most other Kias. As you'd expect, HK3 also offers you a fully featured light wrap option, and to use it, we just need to add our background image to the source well. Or if you're in one of the Adobe hosts, we just need to select the appropriate background layer. Now we can turn on Lightwrap and adjust some of the many features that we have at our disposal, which also include a variety of blend modes. And of course, there's a dedicated Lightwrap view which lets us see exactly what we're adding. And one other unique feature in this section is an advanced compositing option called Edge Blend, which uses a very thin edge mat that samples a small amount of both foreground and background, and then creates a blend of the two. And this subtle effect makes for a much more natural looking edge and a very professional result. There are plenty more features that I won't have time to show you in depth, but I'd just like to point out that HK3 offers a unique white balance option that uses Hawaii's state-of-the-art auto-grade technology to deliver outstanding results. So you can either white balance the input to the Kia only, or the final image, or both, and you can white balance using either a white pick or a skin tone pick, and both of these give great results. So in this case, I'm going to click on the color swatch, bring us up the color picker. I'm going to select this area of skin here and enable image. And you'll see we've got a much nicer result. So if your footage has a pronounced color cast, it can sometimes interfere with pulling a good mat. So it's very useful to have this feature to help with the process and or improve the look of your final composite. HK3 also has a great built-in color correction system that's extremely useful for matching your foreground to your new background and generally getting the best out of your shot. Because the color correction is being applied to the original image prior to the key, this is going to yield a superior result than if you were to add a color correction after the key, which can often make a mess of the alpha channel and that will show up as undesirable fringing artifacts. So it's great to have Hawaii's built-in color correction. HK3 also offers a versatile denoise option, which by default operates in YUV color space, but you can also denoise the RGB channels if you prefer. And one final feature that I'd like to mention before we finish, and that's the on color view. Let's select that from the view menu and we'll skip down to the bottom of the inspector here and look for the on color swatch. And that lets us choose any color we want for the background. And the nice thing about this is that if we select this view for our final composite, this is what we're going to have in our rendered output, which means we don't have to add an external layer of solid color and we can just use this instead. Even better, we can turn on the use color option for both our light wrap and edge blend, and that's going to make for a much nicer composite against our chosen color. 
So there you go, that's just a really quick rundown of some of the main features of HK3. For lots more information, the manual has a detailed description of all the features. HK3 is a unique and incredibly powerful keying system that I'm sure you're going to want to use. Hawaii Kia 3 is available exclusively through Effects Factory, and you can download a free trial version and try it out for yourself right now. Thanks very much indeed for watching.